Today's project is to repair this gate, so I'm not left singing who let the dogs out. What would an IFE channel be if I didn't fix everything? Today it's a gate, tomorrow who knows. The first step in this repair is to remove the gate from the corner post. The gate was not professionally installed. Over time it began to sag and soon the lower pipe was resting on the ground. Leaves and other debris collected and the moisture aided in rusting the pipe through. To make the job easier, my car hauler became the designated work table. This elevated work surface made it much easier on my back. Moisture collected in this lower corner joint it expanded in the winter and froze. These aluminum corner connectors are very delicate and must be handled carefully to prevent damage. The top support was not damaged by the water but I replaced the corners for a consistent look around the perimeter of the fence. This upright post was bent at the hinge point because it was being supported by only one hinge. This shot has a close-up of the bent portion of the pipe. I clamped both pipes together in the jaw horse to allow the upper one to act as a saw guide. I've chosen a higher gauge tubing to improve the strengths of this large gate. Now I must increase the opening of the hinge fittings to match the larger diameter pipe. I found it easy to slip the opening of the fitting over the lip on the jaw horse and use a claw hammer to spread it open. I'm reinstalling the hinge fittings on the left hand side of the gate. With the hinge fittings and fence support installed, it's time to begin assembly. Note, both posts were cut at the same time to ensure proper and equal length. Now I'm turning my attention to the latch side of the gate and removing the latch post. The new corner connectors are sized for the larger gauge pipes. I'm removing the gate latch from the old pipe so I can give this pipe a proper send-off. The fence supports are spaced out evenly along the length of the pipe. With no tension on the fence at this moment, I was able to pull it over and support it with the clamps. The latch is placed above center, but it will be adjusted later when the gate is installed. Now the fun begins, stretching this old fence to match this gate. I started in the lower corner with a set of squeeze clamps which worked fine until I increased the tension as I climbed the gate. I used two clamps in tandem, alternating back and forth and squeezing one then the other until I had it drawn up enough to install the clip. As I squeezed further to the center and up toward the top, I realized that my squeeze clamps no longer had the strength, even with a larger set. So I devised a new method using cargo straps. I attached four cargo straps to the tie-down pockets of the trailer. The two at the opposite end are stationary. The two at this end are used to tighten and tension the fence into position. Let's suppose I didn't have this trailer. How would I have done this? I could have used a vehicle, a tree, or even the fence itself and tied two off to one fence post and tied two off to the other fence post and pulled it into position. I re-employed my squeeze clamps to tension the fence from top to bottom and for this they worked very well. Once again, I worked in tandem and I tied them off with the aluminum wire wraps. To help support the long end of the fence, I am installing a tension cable 
and I'm installing an eye bolt to attach it to the corner bracket at the opposite lower corner. It's very important the tension cable be attached from the upper hinge corner to the lower latch corner to pull up on the far end of the gate. The cable is being threaded through the lower eye bolt and temporarily clamped with a squeeze clamp. The turnbuckle was attached to the upper corner so later when the adjustment needs to be made you don't need to bend over. The cable is looped through the turnbuckle and the slack was adjusted equally at both ends and two cable clamps were attached at each end. With the squeeze clamp gripping the eye bolt, I was able to adjust the turnbuckle with a common wrench through the slotted center. The fence is now ready to install, so I covered the fender well with a quilted blanket to prevent scratches as I slid the now heavier, stronger fence over the side of the trailer. I hung the fence on the upper hinge and I adjusted the lower hinge and when I was satisfied with the swing I tightened them securely. The gate was originally hung on two hinges. It had no trapping hinge so if you lifted the gate it would come free on the hinge side. That was not a secure system so I added a center trapping hinge to stiffen the gate and to prevent it from being lifted. You'll also notice that I added a center support and a helper wheel to allow the fence to swing properly and roll smoothly. Unfortunately, my camera memory card was full, so I don't have a recording of this segment of the video. Note the center support uses a clamshell fitting so you do not need to disassemble the fence to install it. I would like to take this time to thank you all for watching and supporting my channel. And as always, subscribers are always welcome.